so um, right out of the gate, we get uh, Sahith Thagala, who has become uh, a mainstay on the PGA Tour, a big fan favorite. He reminds us right out of the gate that he does, in fact, have the best mustache on the PGA Tour when he wants to go down that route, of course, at the Players' Championship. That thing is meaty. That thing is thick. Claire, that is not something I can touch. I can't get to that level of mustache. I can't either, so don't worry. <laughs> Good. We're in the same boat. Hey, hey, welcome to the Get a Grip podcast. I am Shane Bacon. That is Claire Rogers. And this is Full Swing Tonight with Get a Grip and Scratch. Make sure you follow Claire on social media at K Claire Rogers. I make this proclamation at the start of all these podcasts. And it's not really in my notes. It's just you should do it. And uh, you can read all of Claire's work at golf.com, including the Rogers report that comes out weekly, always entertaining about a lot of the stuff we cover, I feel like, in this series, Claire. And uh, this episode episode seven golf is hard was a good reminder that golf is in fact very very hard yes and i like that the person who said that in this in the episode was rory mcelroy who actually wasn't featured in the episode but when you have someone like rory saying it it it's really means it's true so i, I wanted to you know i mean we we we're presenting these recaps for golf fans that are obsessed with golf and maybe people that don't know a ton about golf that consumed full swing and are just trying to learn a little bit more. So, you know, I, I've been lucky. I've known Sahit the Gala back in his early years. I covered him uh, back in the 2016 U.S. Amateur. That was actually my first uh, opportunity calling golf in my life on a wow. national level. Uh, it was the round of 64. That was the famous uh, Wednesday broadcast where about 10 seconds from live air, Paul Azinger looks at me and goes, you know, people say this is the hardest day of golf broadcasting there is. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. This is the first time I'm doing that. Of course, he was trying to get under my skin and mess with me a bit. But we were at Oakland Hills. Uh, Thagala was 18 years old at the time. And Claire, I want to go through some of the people he beat in match play. Yes, because please I, do. I, I feel like you've you've heard of a few of these people. Uh, his uh, his first person he beat in match play round of 64, Justin Sa who would eventually mm -hmm. become the number one ranked amateur in the world before turning professional. He then beat a, a young man by the name of Sam Burns. You probably heard him in the I round have. of 32. Uh, the next guy, Thagala beat Joaquin Neiman, who was very, very much featured in this episode. Best buddies with Mito Pereira took him down in the round of 16. And who he lost to was Curtis Luck, who, of course, went on to win that U.S. amateur. So that was a great run for Thagala. And I got a real chance to see the game up close and personal. And then of course, in this episode, we got a feel for Thagala's upbringing and him getting into golf. And of course it all goes back to Tiger Woods and why Thagala got another game of golf. Yes. I don't, I have one little amateur story about Sahith, not as good as yours. Um, my cousin caddy for him in the Northeast amateur, amateur, amateur. Um, but I, he was at the um, Netflix premiere two weeks ago at waste management and Dan Rapport was introducing me to him. And I told him, and he was so funny. He was like, oh, he caddied for me the first year. And then the second year he was on someone else's bag. Like he remembers, you know, these little amateur moments, but he was lovely. I was so happy to meet him. And then, you know, his whole family walks around and friends with uh, like team Thagala uh, swag on. So I asked to take a photo for the Rogers report. They're like, are you a big fan? And I was like, yeah, I think he's great. But sure. it was so cute. They had, what does the hat say to like birdies and bogeys team Thagala? They, it's a an entourage of all matching stuff, which I thought was so fun because you don't see that. You don't see, I guess you see Tiger's family wearing red, but you you don't see just kind of a an entourage for like Rory's, you know, friends and family out there. So outside of sixty five year old men that are wearing all orange still to the day to go yeah. watch Ricky Fowler, you don't see that much. At least if you watch it on the broadcast. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, I I, I want to give a, a shout out just to the production crew. This series could have been easily done with just superstars and mm -hmm. people would have consumed it. We're seeing that in golf. I mean, the superstars are getting richer and they're getting more opportunity. And in terms of professional golf, the bigger name you are, you know, the be better you're going to be represented in the current skate, both on the PGA Tour and live. And I love this episode simply because it followed two young people that either you didn't know much about going into last season or you mm -hmm. knew nothing about going into last season. I mean, right. as long as you didn't follow the Corn Ferry Tour or Amateur Golf, you didn't know Thagala and Mito Pereira. And I love the fact that this was mixed in with the Justin Thomases and the Jordan Spieths. And next episode, when we finish, will be a lot about Rory McIlroy. I just love this because there are so many more names in golf than just the five or 10 you see on PJ Tour Live week to week. Yeah, I don't think, I'll be honest, I don't think I knew who Mito was before last year. So 
it was Claire, a how fun episode. is it to say his name mito i just, mito. I just like, <laughs> mito how funny was it great when... name he was like, people are calling me mitochondria out there. And then he and Joaquin are kind of going back and forth. And Joaquin says, I don't need to know what the mitochondria is when I'm singing putts. And then he sings that probably like 12 feet or something. It was so funny to watch. Uh, Jupe life out of the gate, Claire. Jupe has been, you, you know what? Interesting. I would have lost this bet as well. I think the two towns that have been the most prominently showed on full swing are Jupe in Florida and Tulsa, Oklahoma would, would have been, I would have lost a lot of money on that. I would have gone Augusta or yeah. you know, Monterey or Carmel or something like that. And of course, well, everything has gone back to Tulsa in 2022. It, yeah. We've had a feature of Tulsa a lot. And I love how we kind of got to see, you know, we saw in the first episode, JT winning the PGA, but a huge storyline that I think you and I even discussed right after the PGA is we'll take away that JT came from seven back, but Mito might kind of get lost in it. Um, this gave us a really good reminder that this thing was Mito's all week until, you know, the 16th, 17th hole on the last day, which is crazy. Uh, question for you. Are you a short hair Mito fan or long hair Mito fan? We got, we got some of the lengthy stuff from his corn fairy days. What were your thoughts on, on which one you preferred? I think I just like the clean cut okay. short hair. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, I kind of dug the long hair, you know, I mean, I think, you know, you're young, you could pull it off. You could rock yeah, it, especially with the cap gives you a bit more personality. Um, <laughs> and I also, I, I wanted to, to bring this up to you because, you know, you've been around a lot of tour players and, and you've seen the life of a tour player kind of week to week. And we hear a lot about how lonely it can be. And, you know, you could be out on tour and, you know, your family's not always with you and maybe your friends aren't always out there. And I was actually wondering if it's easier to be someone from a different country. I mean, we got such a great glimpse into the life of this kind of Latin America clique. And you had Mito and Neiman and Carlos Ortiz and all of these players that rent homes together and eat dinner together and, and, you know, split chefs together so that they can have that community. And I was thinking mm -hmm. about the players from Latin America or players from Japan or players from Australia and how you almost are given that click when you yeah. play on the PGA tour. And I was thinking about a player, like someone that didn't go to an Alabama or didn't go to an Arizona state or didn't go to Oklahoma state. Someone like Zach Johnson who went to Drake. Right. And he wasn't the next big thing, like a Jordan Spieth. I'm sure for someone like Zach Johnson to find your click takes a lot of effort. And for yeah. someone like Mito, your click is just the people you grew up playing golf with and competing against in your community, in your country, and then in, in the, the parts of the world that you played in. And then you move on to the PGA tour and it's kind of set there for you. Yeah. It's like when you went to high school with someone and then you end up working together later on, you feel like you already know them. And it was so I, that was one of my favorite parts of the episode, just to see the girlfriends and the wives and the chef, they're just hanging out and it's so normal. It's, you could walk into that and you would have no idea that they're golfers. They're just hanging out. I, the Zach Johnson thing may just sparked a memory. Was it the masters a couple of years ago that like he Duffner and Jordan Spieth randomly stayed together and they were going on Instagram live with chipping contests in the backyard. I was like, what is this friend group right here? But yeah, these I totally, guys get together. That's right. I do agree with that. You kind of have to, find your way. I feel like if you're just kind of plopped in it, I transferred colleges. So I, it took a minute to kind of get settled again. And I could see the Zach Johnson's of tour kind of being like, where do I go? Who do I hang out with? Whereas these guys have had those, that click since they were teenagers, which you can't replicate. So do you think Sahith Thagala has heard of Amazon? Like, do you think he understands <laughs> that if you need a laundry basket, just order it on the internet? I mean, he was using literally using a box. He was using a box yes. to transfer his laundry. But we have to, it is funny because he is the superstar now, but he's also what, 24. Right, 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 right. And so it's funny to see he's got the box and he's, but I also think any of my college guy friends probably did the same thing when they first moved to New York or Boston after, but it is so funny just, or, you know, there's target probably within a two mile radius. <laughs> So funny. Any of see. these places sell laundry baskets. Claire, when do you think you owned your first laundry basket as an adult? I mean, do you, I'm assuming you have one now. I do have one now. Um, Multiple? I had one all of college. Just one. Okay. Um, yeah, it's all I need. I had one all throughout college, but definitely not in high school. I, well, 
that's actually not true. I had a laundry basket in my room. Yeah, you're just ahead, you're, you're ahead you're ahead of everybody though. You're just I would let it like get overflowed, and you're like really shoving stuff into the bottom. But yeah, I was. It just kind of made me laugh because my brothers are probably the same way. Just whatever works throw it into a trash bag or something to carry down to the laundry Yeah, I mean, in, th- in theory, it's the same thing. It's just, yeah. you know, it's just, I mean, you get, the box for, you get the box for free. I'm sure it's yeah. clothes from Link's Soul got sent there. I uh, I noticed something that I found yeah. very interesting, Claire. So early in the episode, they showed an early swing of Mito at the waste management. And it was on yeah. the 16th hole and he hated that golf swing. It was a very similar follow through. If you go back and watch it, to the swing he made on the 18th at the PGA Championship. Really quick, really short. You know, it was yep. almost like he was trying to catch up with his hands at the end. But I was thinking to myself, that's his nervous swing. His nervous okay. swing is that move. Because I bet if you went side by side, I would say they look very, very similar from start oh, to finish. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That's a really good thing that you picked up. You know, I know I always, always trying I, to look there. I guess when we rewatched it, I it was like, oh, I know this is coming. It's like when you're watching Titanic. Such a bomber. Oh, and it God. ends the same way every time. It's like, I know it's coming. I don't want to see this. And it was cool that they had um, Mito's wife, Antonia. Huge fan of her. Love her. Love her. Love Have a lot of her. notes on her. Love her. Um, she's like, water. Oh, no. Oh, no. That but, they but, had. But Claire, she had to check her. I mean, she had to get an update on her phone. I mean, this is in yeah. one of the things I have in segments, but. You know, for her to understand what was going on on the golf course, and you've been out there following, and even when you're inside the ropes sometimes, and she was not inside the ropes, I don't believe, but even if you are inside the ropes, sometimes you have absolutely no idea what was going on. Yeah, you'll just miss it for a second. And you obviously, if you're not standing in the right spot, you don't know where it is, and you're she's not close enough. It was funny to see him. His anger was not slamming a club. It was just, I effed up. And then he ripped the glove after, but it wasn't this aggressive anger that I probably would have had if I had done that. He just kind of went with it. And, but seeing, um, it was Antonia and then his caddy's wife were sitting there and she was getting emotional, you know, crying because all week they had had this feeling, oh, we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. And then to see it not happen is, is hard. Um, kind of going back through the progression of the episode, because it was a little bit of, of Mito and Phoenix. Then of course, a lot of it was about the gala because he was so close to winning. This was obviously in the 2022 WM Phoenix open. And I forgot how much he got hosed on 17. You could see how upset he was. It reminded me of the Ricky hose job. He got when he hit it over the green and it went in the water that mm-hmm. one year. And it was, he was so close to winning. I remember his granddad was there watching and Ricky got really emotional after, but the Gala was upset. And you even heard his dad say, Oh, right down the middle. And when you watch the, the, the replay of it and the tracer, I mean, the ball literally is going at the dead center of the green there yeah. at 17 and just got to, gets an awful hop left and goes in the drink there. It was so close, but getting a chance to kind of follow the Thagala family. I know you have some notes on the Thagala family. You already have t- touching your heart, Claire. I mean, me too. I love them. I want to be friends with them. I would like Same. to stay with them on the road if they have an extra room. <laughs> all in on, I mean, is there, I love all these families. All these families love are so them. sweet and cute and I just want to be pals with them. That's it. Like I'll stop covering golf. I'll just hang with them and I'll be just as happy. It's great. They were, I texted uh, you, Shane, as I was watching, or I guess I had just finished watching, but I said, I want Sahid's dad to be my therapist because his feedback is incredible. He keeps it positive and he's so proud of his son. Just having that positive reinforcement all throughout the episode. This guy's awesome. Um, Mito driving and texting. We need to get Jordan Spieth on this. Come on. We got to get Jordan to send that old AT&T commercial thing he did. Don't drive and text anybody. Nope. It's awful. It's a terrible thing to do. Mito was even saying I shouldn't be doing this, but mm-hmm. I feel like if Jordan watched episode seven, he might have to send Mito a text or two. Send a text. I also, again, Waco's little, I mean, obviously he was in it more, but the cameos at the beginning, he calls them right out. I think he's so funny. Uh-oh, not driving a text. <laughs> I mean, that relationship is very, very sweet. It seems like it, it seems like they really, really love each other. It kind of reminds me a little bit of JT and Jordan in a way, because this whole, okay, Jordan kept beating JT and now JT is kind of even the playing field. It, it kind of mirrored that a little bit for me, which I really liked, but it was also funny to hear everyone saying, Mito is an old rookie, an old rookie. And it, 20 what was he 27 which I guess is true but it was funny to hear because they said you know this is Joaquin's fourth year on tour and he's only 23 but 
that added pressure of feeling like an old rookie must be, you know, I don't know. I can't think of any old other old rookies. I guess there are more now that more corn fairy tour players are coming through, but. But I mean, I mean, I but know. the path, but the path, the current path in men's golf is now mimicking what we saw in terms of it in women's golf, where, you know, I mean, youth is, is the, it's the ingredient you need, right? I mean, yeah, you have to be yeah. young and you've got to be hungry and you got to hit the ball far and all those types of things. I remember years ago, the average age of the major championship winners was 33 on the PGA tour. And now, I mean, if you see a 30 year old in the top 10 in the official world golf rankings, it's like shocking to see yeah. such a thing. And I feel like you're seeing more players like Neiman than you are seeing from Mito, even after that great season Mito had on the corn Ferry tour. Yeah. It's kind of scary to think about. They're like, Oh, he's doing so well. He's old. I'm like, he's younger than me. This is <laughs> <laughs> he's 27. This is really, really bumming me out. Not golf Mary, supposed to be this, that's right. Golf was supposed to be the sport that we went to and we couldn't play the other stuff. And now right. uh, not the case so much uh, mm -hmm. in professional golf. Um, one of my favorite moments in the whole episode was you know, they're showing the whole situation at the PGA championship on the 18th and Neiman and everybody's kind of crowded around their green watching what was going on. And I love Neiman going, you know, it's, it's just a, it's just a little, like he was, show, you know, it's just a little flip. Like even he couldn't help himself right as a golfer. Yeah. And you see so many fans out there doing things like that. Oh, that, oh you just got to hit a little cut and they'll, and they'll mimic what a golf swing looks like. But I love Neiman doing that for the Mito chip shot. And then Antonio kind of running over going, is this for par or bogey? Not exactly knowing where yeah. he stood. The whole thing was stressful. And I thought they did a great job of encapsulating the stress, not just for Mito, but caddy and his his girlfriend you know all the way down the line on everybody kind of involved i also didn't realize that mito didn't walk up to the green and kind of look at it from all sides i don't yeah. know if that was a rush thing or yeah, what see, but it was obviously just kind of getting out of out of like what you normally go through in terms of your process but yeah i mean you heard faldo really getting into him going i mean he hadn't even walked up to look at this and if we know yeah. anything about southern hills even after the restoration that 18th green is nothing to mess mm -hmm. with all you got to do is call Stuart sink or Retief gooston and ask him those questions so yeah i mean to not walk over there and look you know you get you get rushed i, I mean i've had this happen to me claire in tournaments where the stress rushes you and yes. what happens is all you're trying to do is slow things down. And when stuff starts going south and starts moving so quickly, it's like you don't even know how to rush it. I mean, at times you'll see people go to the porta potty. They don't have to use a restroom. It's just to go inside and just to be quiet for 30 seconds. Yeah. You know, just to kind of try to slow anything down, slow the heart rate, slow your process down however you can. But yeah, Mito at the last when he had to chip that in to not to go look at the hole, obviously he was thrown off as much as you could be thrown off. And then the putt, like he was so uncomfortable. Yeah, clearly. oh, absolutely. Coming, you know, you know what, what to do? No idea what to do. Which is, if I was kind of surprised his caddy didn't take him. I'm like Ted Scott when uh, Scotty four putted at the Masters. Let's take a second and just yes. chill. You've got let's this. Let's just reset. That didn't happen there. And I was almost kind of surprised he made it because I there was just so much going on. I didn't know. I don't think he knew what he was doing when he hit the putt. And luckily, I mean, it went. I mean, it didn't matter at that point, but he could have missed it. So, well, and, and I think, you know, we'll get into segments in a bit, but I mean, something important to explain to people that aren't, you know, dialing PGA tour website or digging through Getty images, you know, on an hourly basis, like you, Claire is, you know, <laughs> if you're, if you're a rookie on the PGA tour and you finish third in a PGA championship, you have all but locked your card up for the next season. I mean, yes. that is an enormous thing to do. And if he misses that putt, not to say he's not going to lock his card up, but that putt for Mito Pereira, even though the PJ championship and the Wanamaker's out the window, finishing third versus finishing fourth or fifth or whatever the case may be is a ton of money and a ton of FedEx cup points. And for him to kind of be so out of sorts there on the 18th green and just still wiggle that in, I mean, that could impact the future of your career. I mean, that could change yeah. it from being, a top 125 guy getting into some of the FedEx cup events, you know, you finish top 30 in the tour championship and you get into now century tournament of champions and all the majors the next season. So a lot comes with where you finish in these tournaments and it matters, especially if you're in that top five and top 10 category, because there's so much money and so many points that come with those at these elevated and major championships. Yes. And Mito and then Sean Foley kind of doubled down on it. They haven't, and I get every rookie goes through this at some point, but they've never played these courses that these other guys know like the back of their hand at this point. So that's such a disadvantage. They, so the fact that he finished third is actually, it's just more incredible than I think the average golf fan or person watching this 
would even consider because this is a totally new area for him where other guys have kind of been around the block a little bit, not saying the PJ championship is played there every year, but they've had more experience there. Yeah. And, and something I found really interesting with the way this series has been laid out now that we're through seven episodes is the way the first episode was cut where we were following Justin at the PGA and he's well back and he starts making the birdies and the putts are dropping and he gets to 18 and he flags it on 18 and all that's going on. You're following through the eyes of Justin Thomas, right? You're looking right. through the eyes of the person that eventually wins that PGA championship. And in a weird way, as you're watching episode one and JT's on the range and he's hitting balls with bones and he's asking Colt for a monitor again, you're almost rooting against Mito in that moment yep. because you know the the series is setting you up for wanting to root for one of the main characters of episode one and then you flip six episodes later and you get to episode seven and you're looking through that same tournament in the eyes of the person that it, in theory choked out on the last hole i mean he had a chance to make par and win and he doesn't do so even showing 17 i th thought was really smart with mito because just short of the green gets that up and down he's got a two-shot lead he probably hits a different club on the tee there at 18 if he makes that birdie putt and i just said you know if you watch episode one and then flipped episode seven you really get a feel for the different experiences these players go through in these big events one of them obviously winning and the other one having this brutal loss they have books like that, Shane, where you can read. I, I remember when I was in high school, Twilight, you could read um, it from, what is it, Bella's point of view. And then they came out with one where you could read it from Edward's point of view. And I thought Ooh. it was the coolest thing because to see what he was thinking when Bella was explaining it, it's just, it is really cool to see it from both perspectives and how different it is. Yeah, but it is, I didn't even think of that where you're rooting against Mito in the first episode. And then the, this one, you're, you really feel that heartbreak for him and his family or not his family, oh. but his wife and everybody. So his crew, I mean, the crew just, his squad. And, then, and then, and then clear him apologizing to everybody at the end. Sorry to make you wait around for so long. And you know, you just, I mean, <laughs> you do that, right. It's, you know, you have people rooting you on and everybody wants you to do so well. And yeah. we see the triumph so often in the way we look at the sport, because that's what you write about. You're writing about the winner and you're right about the family and you're following around the wife and you're doing those types of things. And the losers have to go through, through this entirely different emotional roller coaster where they feel like they let everybody down. And yeah. I think we got a little about a little of that for me too. And, 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 you know, we got a lot of that from the gala in Phoenix too, where the gala and those post round interviews and him being so upset and, and just, you know, gaining hundreds and thousands of golf fans from every word he spoke, because you saw yeah. that emotion on the shoulder. He wanted to win it so bad, even if it wasn't a major championship, it's such a big event and an opportunity to win for the first time on the PGA tour. So really two different emotional experiences for these players that both went in similar paths. Yeah. And then I was so happy we got to see on the flip side when Waka won at the Genesis yeah. and Mito was there because you got to feel how it could have been, you know, and we got to see that it does still happen. And it was cute when Amanda said, you know, they want to beat the crap out of each other, but they are genuinely happy for one another when somebody wins. So I, I wonder for players like that who are best friends and from different parts of the world, living in a different area, I wonder how hard it is to truly compete against your best friend. You know, it's almost like how the Williams sisters finals in grand slam tennis was always the worst tennis to watch because you could just tell that that one extra level of motivation wasn't there because yeah. at the end of the day, as long as Venus won or Serena won, I know they were happy for the other person, yeah. even as, if they wanted to win so much. And I wonder if you saw Mito and a Joaquin battle it down the stretch at a big event. I wonder what that emotion would look like on the 18th green, because somebody would have to win and somebody would have to lose. And I feel like the person that lost or the person that won would almost feel better or worse for the other person than they would for themselves. Yeah. And also I'd be curious to see what the round looked like. You remember Tony Finau said he kind of tried to talk to Tiger, the 2019 oh, masters. How did you would some, would they do that or would they just have a great time and maybe it wouldn't feel as serious? I don't All know. Right. But then again, they're competitors. So I trust that they'd be good. <laughs> and they're, they're trying to win. All right. So, so getting to segments, unless you have anything else yeah. from the episode, no, no, let's um, get into it. I will start. I have, a, I have three winners from this oh. episode. Um, so winner number one, the Latin America click look like they're having a great time. They look yeah. like they're living the life that I would want to live. If I was a millionaire pro golfer, I want to, like we said, want to be involved in that click. would like to be having dinner with them. Um, also a winner of this episode is red meat, a lot of red <laughs> meat for dinner. Uh, you know, I mean, I know we, we kind of picked, you know, a few meals at different events, but red meat 
uh, maybe make it a comeback in that circle. All right. It's good for the heart, right? Or is it bad think, for the heart? I can't I remember. Think it's, I think it's probably not great. I don't think you want to eat a lot. I mean, I, I'm, it's, I'm not like- I'm Good iron content. That's what it is. Need your iron up. Uh, <laughs> central character, though, for their dinners. And lastly, and I'd like your comments on this, Antonio's hat. Uh, just thought it was an awesome hat. Thought the, the, cat, the hat she was wearing during that final round of the PGA Championship, two thumbs up. Just thought it was a great look. I'm telling you, these- Wives and girlfriends bring it on the final day. I, Meredith Scheffler has this straw hat that she'll wear. And I think it is incredible. It looks so good. I want one, but I am also wearing athleisure on the golf course. So it wouldn't quite go together, but I do want one because they, the outfits are always like second to none. I would say, especially on Sunday when they know they're going to probably be on TV. Yeah. The, uh, it's a good point on knowing what you're looking for with your style. This is yeah. one of my big issues with joggers is I wear joggers almost all the time, but the shoes need to match the look. And I yes. feel like we've seen this with Justin Thomas and Philip Knowles, who's a corn fairy guy that, that got uh, promoted up to the PGA tour this past season also does this where he goes joggers, but then he goes dress shoes. Mm -mm, like the classics. Can't do it. You got to go like an air max 90 or a, yes. a, a tennis shoe with the joggers. If that's the look you're going for again, all the way through the bag hat down to shoe. Let's make sure it all clicks. It's got a match. Okay. So my winner was saw his dad. Um, I loved when I actually wrote down what he said. Um, let's see one second. Uh, well, he said, it's okay. You'll get your day soon when he lost at the waste management. And then he said, sometimes you become a better player because of your losses. So I feel like maybe it could be great that he lost. He's just so positive and I want him as my therapist. As I said earlier, he's just a rock star and win or lose. I think there are probably some helicopter parents out there, not even just in PJ tour, but in high school and college, where if you play poorly, your parent gets really angry. I didn't grow up like that because I didn't set that high of an athletic standard for my parents, but they, um, you can tell he's just proud that his kid is living his dream on the PJ tour, which was awesome to see. So he is my winner of the episode. Uh, my dad was, was not like, he was, he was a great, you know, he was a great person to go to golf tournaments with. And he was not one of those guys that would get down on you. If you played bad, he would only get down on you. If you acted like an a-hole on the golf course, yeah, my dad would get yeah, frustrated. Yeah. but my dad would do this that, um, I would advise other dads not to do. If your kids uh -huh. playing junior golf, if I was playing really bad, my dad would go watch other groups, <laughs> not because he was again, frustrated with my golf. Like he wasn't mad at me for playing bad golf. He would just go watch like the better players play. There's so better golf to be seen. I'd be, I'd be like six over through seven and I'd be looking around for Monty and he'd be gone. I'm like, oh, well, I guess he's going to watch Jeff Bell. You know, it's like, cool. Maybe you went to see Casey Wittenberg out on the golf course. Like, thanks, dad. It wasn't a great look. It didn't exactly <laughs> boost my confidence when I saw Monty uh, piece it out on my round for another uh, for another junior golf round. So again, was it wasn't mad about my golf. Just uh, just would, would, would like to go see something looking a little bit better. I love that so much. Who is your loser of the episode? All right. I, I got it. I think, I think I, I was waiting till the very end to write something down because it was a lot of positive on this episode. Yes. Um, Antonio just calling the win two holes to go. Can't do it. Can't yeah. do it in golf. If he makes this putt, we're going to win, makes the par putt on 16, call him the victory. Golf doesn't allow that. Got to play all 72. Nope. So just, it, I think she'll learn. I think yeah. she'll learn not to do that in the future, but Understand that, especially at a PGA Championship and especially at Southern Hills, it's not like 18 is the easiest hole in the world. You even heard the Gala say that last hole is really hard. Got to play the last two and even par. So just felt like she got a little ahead of her skis. Sam Ryder's mom did the same thing a couple of weeks ago, but she was kind of put on the spot. They did oh, like a fairway. Oh, I remember interview. that. Yeah. I'd probably do the same thing. I'd just be too excited. Okay. My loser of the episode was just knowing that Mito went to live, it kind of made the whole, wow, the, great only thing I, the only thing I want in my whole life is to win on the PJ tour. And I totally get he went, that's fine. But it just kind of took away from the episode for me because I knew how that ends. Um, so put a little great, damper on great it. Great point. Uh, obviously recording this, in late February after this was released and Mito recently just announced, I mean, literally the week we're recording this, that yeah. he's going to live. So this is a recent announcement, but that's a great point. You know, when you hear some of the stuff and this has happened with a lot of players, Mito yeah. isn't the only one that has no, no, said no, no, one no. thing and done the other, but yeah, that's a great point of like how much he talked about winning on the PJ tour and playing on the PJ tour and that being his dream. And then of course to go to live, Hey, listen, man, you got to chase that dough, I guess, but it, it does take a little bit away. What's something you learned on this episode um something oh 
Interesting. Well, one, I'd forgotten that Mito quit for a couple of years, but uh, Pis- Piscola? Piscola? I have it down too. What? Same thing. Yeah. And so I look, it's brandy and a soft drink. Sounds Pis- just. Pisco brandy and a soft sounds drink. Sounds just awful. <laughs> you Doesn't know what, it? though? Yes, but <laughs> first time I ever had alcohol, I had no idea what I was doing. I was at my cousin's wedding waiting in line at the open bar. I'm like, how, how, how old are we here, Claire? What are we talking about? Like 18, 17, uh, 20? Eight, what are we? 18. Okay. My cousin, And then I didn't drink for like another two years because I was like, that was disgusting. I don't like it. Um, so I'm waiting in line. I'm starting to get nervous. What am I going to order? I don't know. Let, none of my cousins are with me in line. I'm like, hi, can I have a vodka Coke? And the guy's like, what? <laughs> that's not a thing that you order <laughs> and it was so bad I didn't drink again for so long because I was like this is disgusting but is so I guess the brandy makes it better than a vodka oh, wood right it's just well I mean <laughs> yeah I mean I mean I guess like in theory a, a dark liquor and coke is a drink that people order vodka to coke maybe not the case I I do like <laughs> that the bartender called you out it's like no no no, no young lady this is actually <laughs> not a thing you're yeah like, you're like can i get an orange wine and they're like we don't have orange wine it's white he was red. like are you sure and i yeah yeah that's what i want and he's shaking his head uh, so, so something i learned i wrote that down as well i've heard of the drink uh i think it's cali mocho which is a spanish drink which is red wine and coke and you mix it Ooh. together i literally am getting heartburn thinking about that drink <laughs> at this point in my age but i know that as a drink but i was unaware of brandy with diet coke and that being like a go-to and the fact that they were actually drinking it when they had nice red wine <laughs> at the house it's like guys you can pour it but go ahead and just go have the hundred dollar cab you know? yeah and they even said you know this is what you drink when you first start drinking when you're, when you're 13. 18 or meet us so yeah 13 but it was and then they offered the camera guy one which i thought was awesome <laughs> He's like, oh, sure. Um, golf thing that needs more explanation. Um, I I wrote this down. No matter what you accomplish at previous levels in this sport, so college, amateur golf, as I talked about off the top with the gala, Corn Ferry, as good as Mito was, and I think it was Amanda saying, you know, this has happened 12 times ever, is getting yeah. that battlefield promotion where you win three times in a season and you go straight to the PGA Tour. When you graduate to that next level, you're basically back to square one. And so yeah. no matter the path, when you get to the PGA tour, there's a little inside baseball in terms of seeding and what tournaments you might get into early in the year, but you're basically like back to no money, back to no points, back to a rookie and go out there and see what your game can do. And so you don't get to lean on what you did the season before when you get up to the PGA tour. Yeah. You're better at this segment than I am. I literally wrote, not sure. Okay. <laughs> I do agree with that though, but I think, they could do a whole episode on players getting their uh, PJ tour card in season two. I know it's a PJ tour show, but go, cause what's, you know, at the end of the season and they have all the Instagram and the yeah. guys are throwing their hats up, like it's high school graduation. That would be a really cool explainer to just how exciting it is. Cause not all those guys end up getting with their PJ tour card. Some guys are journeymen on the corn Ferry tour for their whole, you know, playing career. So yeah, I, agree I mean, with what you said there. We, we had a we had a we had a guy that graduated, you know, through the Corn Ferry last season named Taylor Montgomery, who literally finished 26th, which is the cutoff number in both the regular season points and the playoff points for the Corn Ferry. So this is a guy that had been on the Corn Ferry tour throughout his career and literally missed out on a PJ tour card by one spot in both of the mm-hmm. qualifying ways. So yeah, I mean, it's hard to get through and you can live on the Corn Ferry for a long, long time. So I think that's a good point. What other segments you got, Claire? Um, let's see something that I changed my mind on it's again, it, I just went all in on it instead of just not really knowing where I stood. This guy's staying in a house together. I think it's so fun. Having a cook for everybody is genius. Um, and it is funny though, when the question was, is Tony being distracted by having all these people around and now it's, oh, it's the best thing ever to have all these other people around who just happen to not be your children. But I think and I did, who said it, that it's just good for, if you're happy off the course, it's going to help you on the course. Someone Absolutely. said it during the episode. And I think, you know, that is, they just are having so much fun. It feels like just a normal house party with guys who happen to be playing golf, but could be just your neighbors and somewhere in other world. So Claire, this is a, this is like an older person thing. If you're not a professional golfer, but you know, I was, I was always a hotel person. I I didn't really get into the early stages of Airbnb. I like the fact that at a hotel, 
someone who cleans your room every day and you can get new towels and yep, those yep. types of things, right? Like, I just like that part of the hotel. You can have your own room. You can close the door. You can watch what you want to watch, go to bed when you want to go to bed. And as I've gotten older, the idea of the Airbnb has been way more appealing because, again, it's a little bit like what you're seeing in this episode when you have kids, especially, and you go on a trip or you go on a vacation and you have a house, either the kids are there and the other friends' kids are there as well and they can play together, yeah. or you have no kids and it's real communal. There's a place that everybody gets to hang out in. And when you're done with the golf or the wedding or the beach or whatever the vacation may be, you've got a place to go back and all hang out together. And in theory, you're there with your friends. So this only makes more sense to me as I've gotten older is I'm moving a little bit away from that hotel life and a little bit more into that rental home and Airbnb life. And I even do it at some of the golf tournaments I attend is if there's options for house with people or hotel, I, I typically pick house because again, being on the road as a journalist, as you know, Claire can be lonely yeah. at times as well, especially if you're on the road for a few weeks in a row, it's like, okay, I can go to dinner tonight or I can just stay in my room. And if you stay in your room, you end up spending, you know, 12, 15 hours alone. It's like, did I do that three nights in a row? Like I should yeah. probably go do something with somebody. Yeah. Especially if it's a long work trip. We just did an Airbnb last week. And my only rule is I get the nicest bedroom. And then I'm totally low maintenance after that. Is, is <laughs> but, this because, is this because you're a female? Is this because I mean, you're, only, what's yeah, the reason? I just make, I just make the rule on myself and I okay. say, um, yeah. And Dylan and Sean and whoever is with there, they're like, yeah, whatever, fine. You can have it. I'm like, Oh, are you guys sure? But the, the, guy the golf.com crew is like, yeah, whatever, man. To be fair, very low maintenance group of guys there. I mean, I can very only imagine maybe you get some high maintenance person. They might be like, no, 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 no. I'm senior over you. But yeah. I guess if you're the only female, it makes sense. And I, I, I needed to say this, I was going to say this at the end of the episode, but you know, Dylan to has done such a great job of this. He actually profiled Mito for golf.com yes. throughout the week of the PGA championship. And they had set this up obviously before Mito played well and got himself contention and took the big lead. So I urge you, if you didn't get to read this and didn't get to check out the profile he did from that week at the PGA, go back and check the archives on golf.com. Cause I thought it was really, really well done. Um, also Dylan, you know, appearance in this episode, the color of the media lanyards were the best ever at the PGA Championship. Were you they, see, they're were they pink or green. Yeah, they were like it? between pinkish purple. All the ones I have are just not. They're black or dark purple. There's nothing going on. I was like, oh wow, I want that one. Um, something I changed my mind on. Yeah. Is and I and I, I I think about this a lot. I probably think about this too much, but I, the way I think about a glamorous life for glamorous people and the way their lives really are, you know, yeah. like celebrities pick their kids up from school celebrities cook dinner, you know, celebrities mess things up, you know, celebrities get too drunk. Like these things happen to famous people, just like they happen to every normal people like you and I right. and to see the gala, even as a rookie. I mean, this is a millionaire golfer. I mean, he made, I'm, I can only imagine he made multiple million dollars last year in his first season as a professional golfer, seeing him do normal things, do everyday things, battle, you know, the struggles, like you said, that 20 somethings go through. It's a good reminder that the life is both less glamorous than you think it is and more normal than you think it is, which are, which are both good things in a way. Yeah. When he said, you know, I used to separate my laundry, but now I just throw it all in. Which are I you a, love. are you a laundry separator or are you a throw it all in? I'm a throw it all in. Although like towels and sheets are separate, but besides that nowadays, some stuff I'll get dry clean. It's not a lot, but if I have a sweater or something, I'm not going to mess with it. What about you? I'm a separator. This is one of the biggest uh, arguments my wife and I have is I like to do my own laundry. I hate when she touches my laundry. I do her laundry. I don't think she's very good at laundry. And I think she would agree with that point. Uh, glad she can't hear me. She's upstairs. But yeah, I mean, that point of contention is she wants to throw everything in and I will do like dark colors. I'll do reds. I'll even yeah. do some light color piles at times. I'll do whites alone. I do not like throwing things in, even with the color catcher. And she will throw everything in, everything in. towels baby clothes. Like it drives me absolutely bananas <laughs> when she does that. And so again, this is why I do the laundry and she does not. Until it goes wrong. It's okay though. Like I haven't had a problem with it, but the second something happens, I'll go back to separating. In high school I did. Cause I was you know, at my parents' house and I had a laundry, there was yeah. a laundry room, but here I'm, they bought know, the detergent. They, yeah, they, yeah. they paid for the water. You're like, cool. I'll, I'll do 10 loads of laundry. Who cares? This is amazing. With four shirts. Like each, so. um, uh, I think we skipped your favorite moment. Oh, I mean, I think my favorite moment was just that reaction after Mito lost with him hugging his wife, oh, talking yeah, to the yeah. players, 
I think it could be seen as a bit of a depressing moment, but I just love the realness of it, how everybody hung around after, and they even hung around after he was done and he lost to yeah. just be there for him. I, I thought it was a, a beautiful reminder that as positive as some of these episodes have been and as how, how happy everybody's been when things happen and people win, I think it's just as important to have those friends and that community around you when it's not going so great. And I just thought it was a beautiful moment to see me to walk off the green, realizing he kind of screwed it up and everybody patting him on the back going, I also love that Neiman didn't know where he finished. He's like, you finished second. And as the playoffs (laughs) going on and he was like, Oh no, you're right. Third. I guess that's right. (laughs) So good. I liked, you know, saw I'm in on the press uh, interview tiers post rounds, like totally here for it. Um, but when so I had said afterwards, why would you temper your emotions? My dad always said, show how you're feeling. They're just, again, my takeaway is that they're an awesome family. Awesome family seem like uh, beautiful, beautiful people. What average fans will get out of this? And I test a little bit on this, but the past to the PGA tour, uh, to- yeah. totally different past from these guys grew up in totally different areas, have totally different games. And I think have totally different you know, projections, obviously now, as you said, with Mito on live and the gala on the PGA tour, they're going to be playing in different types of events, but to get to the PGA tour, you can go plenty of different ways. The gala was in my, in my mind, the better amateur player and collegiate mm-hmm. player. And he went through that path. And then for Mito took him a little bit longer to get there, but then obviously had an enormous season on the corn Ferry tour to get to the PGA tour season. And I thought you got to see a little bit of that early in the episode. Yeah, I think Amanda did such a good job explaining it when she said it's kind of, what you say, like AAA or something, just making the comparison. And then just, it shows that some weeks you have it and some weeks you don't. Mito uh, missed the cut at the Waste Management and then the next week finished 14th at the Genesis. So it just shows how hot and cold it can be when really not that much really might change with your game, but depending on a course or just, there are a million factors that could, you know, impact how you play one week versus the other. Yeah, I mean, I, again, this was, I don't want to say this was my favorite episode, but it was definitely one of my favorite episodes to this point, just because, again, I love the journey and learning a little bit more about these players that aren't, you know, splattered across the front of PJTour.com and, right. and golf.com because they're not quite those superstars yet. And they might get there. And I think it's easy to root for both these players as they go through this journey. Maybe a little less with Mito just because of the live decision, even though, again, that's that's his life and his decision and what he wants yeah. to do. But you know, for Tagala, I think this is a guy that's going to have a big fan following if he hadn't already. And I could see Tagala leaning a bit on this series like Joel Damon did to gain those fans. Yes. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see the next, you know, couple of tournaments, how many more people are following him. And I want, you know, they should start selling Team Tagala merch. Yeah. I don't know where, but put it as link and bio on Instagram and then everyone on the course will have it. There you go. Claire is actually going to do the consulting for that. So, so yeah. have to reach out to uh, to Claire for that. Uh, one episode left, Claire. We got one I know, left sad. Uh, full swing tonight. Uh, rumor is Rory McIlroy is prominently involved. And we get a chance to see my favorite golf course in the world at St. Andrews. But a big shout out to Claire, obviously, for the help through the series. One more to go. Make sure you follow Claire at K Claire Rogers on social media. You can read everything she does at golf.com and a big shout out to our friends at scratch and a reminder, you can watch these episodes on YouTube so you can see our faces as we talk and not just listen to our voices. So check back for episode eight. Hope you guys are enjoying full swing tonight.